Good morning, today is Friday, it's the 24th of August and today we are going to start a trip from Dondet all the way to Laubau um, As you can see, we are at our favorite dinner place in Dondet Little Pumpkin is already waiting for me Hey! Yes, daddy's back! She's happy with that um, Just returning these bottles I just got four gallons of or four liters of gasoline in uh, Dundet. You can only buy gasoline in a bottle because we're on an island, so it's pretty remote. Um, but this is one of our favorite places to eat on the island. Danique, say hi. Hmm. 8 a.m. in the morning, and we're gonna get ready for the trip. 600 kilometers that we're gonna do in these three days. Yeah, let's see how it works. Also something funny, we're gonna go to Vietnam in three days I still don't have my visa yet because they are hating me at the visa and for that he got confused three times um, then he got it within a day I've been struggling for 10 days now so If you're ever in Dundet um, they, there is a special pumpkin out here that only grows out here which is a really really nice pumpkin I got the pumpkin with egg omelette but they also have like special pumpkin burgers and everything and it's just so delicious if you want to go from one island to the other one with the scooters, as you can see, the guy's coming towards me. You need to get on a boat like that ferry. And from there we go to the main island of the 4000 islands and down to Pakse. Katai. So we're here on the ferry from Dundet to another place I don't know what the name is about. The ferry is basically two boats tied together, a little raft on it, scooters on it, we're on it, yeah. off to an adventure. It seems like today is a beautiful day, the sun's out there, all some clouds but we are really happy with that because the Nick had a nice tan. And we want to keep it that way, we don't want it to turn her into a lobster, even though it's quite funny. Um, it's not nice. <laughs> I know, you know, babe. It's uh, a lot of traffic today on the water. We got two other boats coming for an encounter. Last time that we were on uh, this boat, we literally needed to hop from one boat to another boat. I'm not joking, there was another boat we needed to transfer on the water, but not now. We can just go. And then we can go on with a 12 hour journey. So we are still 10 minutes away from Paxe. We decided to treat ourselves a little with a cappuccino for me and a nice ice frappe strawberry for the Nick. I also got some snacks in. Togedo is still with us. And like yeah, what I said, 10 minutes to Paxi. There is something going wrong with the Nick's motorbike, so we're gonna go to the dealer to check it out. Hopefully, it's nothing bad, and uh, then we can continue the road for today. So we are live in Pakti now, it took us about 10 minutes to get here. Sun's out shining, we got very lucky with the weather today. As I was telling you before, we heard that we were sound on a motorbike, so we just got a repair shop. We asked the lady from the hostel if there's somewhere a good one, she recommended this one. Um, yeah, and he's just going to do his thing, I think. So we just went to another mechanic, just to tell them that we are just two white people that are way too concerned about their bikes and we left it because there's nothing wrong and it's just a ticking sound of the bench and the metal that's all about it so because we've been on the road for a couple of hours now we needed a snack and what's better than to get tiki masala and none from your favorite place 
This place is called Hassan Indian Restaurant. It's in Paksa, it's nearby. Look it up, they have really good tikka masala. And we always enjoyed eating here. After a good ride of so four or five hours, I think, we finally got ourselves a room in a small village. This is what 120,000 kips get you, which is like six euros. Sarah already approved the room, so we're all good. We're just gonna get, refresh ourselves and go to a mechanic oil shop because there is definitely something wrong with Denny's bike. Still don't know what, but we gotta keep us strong. It seems that we're not totally wrong because at this motor shop they just took off the wheel and apparently the something was wrong. <laughs> apparently something was wrong. And they are they the Lagers. The Lagers. <laughs> the Lagers of the motorbike were not correct. So yeah, that's what they're doing now. The Nick's enjoying her five seconds of fame. <laughs> oh yeah. And these are the shops. The thing that I love about Lao or anywhere in Asia, once you just drive in with your motorbike, they just help you straight away. You don't have to wait like in Holland um, and you pay decent prices. Good morning and welcome back at part two of our trip from Dong Dat all the way to Lao Bao to Dong Ho in Vietnam. It is 8.30 right now. We just woke up. We are at a very small village, so I don't think we're gonna find any breakfast here. So I think we just got decided that we're just gonna drive up one hour for a very fancy coffee shop or at least fancy for a Lao saying. Um, we're just about to walk the dog, doing that after that we're gonna get ready. Then we're gonna start another trip for four or five hours today I think, around uh, two or three hundred kilometers we're gonna drive. To close enough to the border, then we can go into Lao tomorrow and back to Vietnam. So. Not every day that you see two cows fight or cuddling. I think I interrupted their game. Sorry guys. So after we had a really good start, start off at 9 a.m. like we wanted to, uh, it turned out I had a flat tire. Yesterday it was already flat and we got some air in, but we forgot to check it. So we're just gonna get a small break at this place. We're gonna replace it or something else and uh, then we can go on the road again. As you guys can see here, I got nothing on the back anymore of the motor. Apparently I had a flat tire, but what we didn't know is I drove through a lot of metal sheets. This guy has been like, Picking stuff out of my tire for the last 10 minutes. But uh, they're doing a really good job while they're at it. They're also adjusting the chains and everything. So at least they know what they're doing. We got a bit delay on our schedule. Still haven't had any breakfast, but it doesn't ruin the fun. So if you're wondering if Sarah does like the travel that we make with her, this is how she always get in her bench. Such come. Mom. Eén, twee, op. Hoppa, oh. Because she's a big and grown-up woman, she can do it all by herself. We have just arrived at our next destination. Thank you for interrupting my video. It's called the Sissapedia home, or as I call it, the Simpsons home, because it's all yellow and painted. Um, the Nick is over there with the doggy dude. We are going to get a nice hot shower and relax. I don't even know what time it is. Do you know what time it is? It's too late. That's one thing for sure. It's finally stopped raining. We uh, did have some luck. It wasn't as bad as we expected, but we have arrived. 
another day, another journey. Today we are finally going to Vietnam after a good two days of driving. Today will be the third day. And as you can see, the weather isn't with us. We went to get some breakfast like 20 minutes ago and we could already see the clouds coming. But surrounded by the clouds, there was a bit of sun. So we're really hoping that there's just a small, small area of clouds. Sarah, hey, is that kijkjes? So we could at least say dry. But uh, we just kind of waited out for a bit. It's not as bad as it was in the beginning. So yeah, this is the place that we're staying. It's a uh, better than you think motel kind of thing. Not great, but what can you expect? So today we have 160 kilometers to drive to the Laowa border. Then we get in Vietnam. Then we get another 30 minutes of around the 20 kilometers. And then we finally are at our new place for the day. So it's finally dried up. My indicator, kilometer indicator says 333003. Three, three. So that can only be good luck. Here we go. As buffaloes, we are going to ride into the storm and see where it ends. If you're wondering what an ordinary shop in Laos looks like, this is a normal shop where you can just buy, have food, and as you can see, there's a man just staying in bed over there. Uh, this is totally normal in Laos. You see a lot of times that they sleep in the same place where they work literally uh, even a gas station has beds like the Elon Musk but then the cheap version of it <laughs> yeah we just had a quick stop after a 30 minute ride because it was raining it stopped now but we needed some or I needed some coffee and then he got a Red Bull let's wake up When you're driving a motorbike, they need gasoline, of course. But in Laos, they don't speak English very well, or most of the people at the local place don't speak English at all. So how do you say full or please fill it up? Just say some, 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 some. And they all know what you mean. The good thing about Laos, you still pay like one euro for it. In Netherlands, I heard it's already two euros, euros 20. And here they even do it for you. You pay less and you get the great service of people are filling it up for you. And you got this hot looking girl at every gas station that follows me around. And this queen. And this Gasoline weird one. Gasoline also. Yes. Travel tip. When you travel with a dog, make sure that you always have something which you can drink out of. Sarah, say hi to your fans. Nope. Sorry guys, not important. you're not important anymore. In Lao, this is a normal vehicle. You see with the extended all the way. People are all happy, they're all waving at me. <laughs> what are you laughing at? And how cool is this? So cool. Come tie. Yes. Only in Lao we've seen that. Okay, so when I'm talking about the Lao nature, this is actually what I'm talking about. You can just see for miles and miles away the rice fields, just a couple of trees in the middle of the fields and a couple of old vintage house, houses just chilling over there but this is really the lower nature that I fell in love it is just so good and you only see this at the countryside After driving more than 600 kilometers and full three days into Lao, we have finally arrived at the Lao border. Um, it's always excited for us to get at the border. Why is that? Because we were bringing in a Vietnamese motorbike and not only that, we were also doing this with our doggy dude. Um, as you will see, the border agents were really, really friendly to us. Um, 
They just came up, walked to us, they asked us if we had our Vietnamese visa because you need to have at least your Vietnamese visa before you arrive, they don't do a visa on arrival. They asked us about the motorbikes, if they were Vietnamese or Lao. Um, they didn't ask for any paperwork of them and they also asked us where we came from. They didn't do any trouble, they just gave us a stamp, I think we paid 1 or 2 euros for the stamp and then we were uh, off to the Vietnamese side. Where we come from in Lao? Yeah. Um, Tombet. <laughs> Savannah. Uh, Savannah. No, don't don't you that. Me, yes, I have, I have. We came from uh, Dundet three days uh, ago. Chapasak. Savannah cat and Chapasak. Savannah and Savannah cat. Yes. Long drive. It took us three days to get here. Mm. We uh, we haven't stand. You go by bike. Vietnam motorbike. Yes, oh. we go back now. Laos has been very beautiful. Good place. I think we need to get the stamps inside. Ah. I think so. You just stamp. You just stamp to to come come back to Vietnam. Don't stamp. You can stamp this. this inside. Thing. Yes. Oh. Exit, exit to Laos. Exit. Yes. Departure, departure of Laos. Can we leave the bikes here? Ah, uh, you can. Yes, Captai. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, this, oh, sir. Okay. Sorry. Captai. Do you have visa for Vietnam? Yes, yes. You want to see it? But you can. So we just passed the first one. Um, keep in mind, whenever you're traveling with a motorbike, you need to have the D53 form for your motorbike to be accepted here in Laos. We did have it, but we never paid for it because it was late and yeah, we just needed the money for uh, accommodation. We arrived at the last part. We have arrived at the last obstacle of a journey and that is the Vietnam border. Um, getting the stamp was pretty easy. After we got the stamp we stepped on our motorbikes and at one point a guy came up to us. He wanted to see paper for uh, our Dovidu Sarah. Um, it was quite funny because we had our health certificate and everything ready but he wanted to see our passport. After two seconds looking into the passport um, he gave it back to us and said that everything was okay. We didn't think that he could read the passport because it's in European and English but it was still a, a funny scenario. Um, how do the people react when you travel with a dog? Most of the people don't really know what they're seeing because it's not really common to travel with your dog or even to walk with your dog in Asia. Um, so most of them just laugh and are like, what is this? So we just arrived at our uh, Airbnb. It's called Camping Resort and uh, look at this view. How good can this be? This view is insane. It's also a coffee place in one, that are the house that we're staying in. So I can get my fresh coffee here in the morning, it will be nice and ready made. And tomorrow we can just continue to travel. But yeah, this will be a few for a couple days for one day. There's the Nick. And there's the Nick. So you got one and so you got two. No yeah, one's already enough. Let's keep it that way. We got a shakes. I believe they are good and we have this view. What else can you wish for? Uh, maybe a million bucks, but yeah. then in euros, you know, not not Vietnamese because then it's uh, two Mackies and that's it. Now live from Vietnam, we really hope that you like this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment and leave a like. 
one of our next videos will be all about India because this is one of the trips we will be planning soon. Um, yeah, once again, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and see you next time.